We'll come again to part two of section 13.6, equations of motion, cylindrical coordinates. So let's see how we can draw the free body diagram for a problem that involves polar or cylindrical coordinates. So if this one here is a polar system because the motion is a planar motion, there is no action along the z direction. So here we have the object, which is the particle C, and the coordinate is basically going to be the radial direction pointing from the origin all the way to the particle and the transverse direction following the rotational motion of the particle in the counterclockwise direction. Also, we, I should remind you that AR is positive in the direction of R and A theta is uh, positive in the direction of theta. Uh, as we described in part one, weight is always acting downward and other forces like the normal force will be uh, a normal to the tangent while the friction force is acting along the tangent but it is opposing the motion. So let's see how we can put all those forces together. So here we are representing the particle C with this blue ball and its path with this orange uh, curved path. The tangent is this one. So that's the tangent. Also, if you remember, the origin was somewhere here and the rotation was going in this direction. So if this is the particle and this is the origin, and when we extend the position vector, this is it. So this is the radial direction along this line. And perpendicular to it, we will have the transverse direction, theta. Now, it's just a coincidence that these two happen to be along the horizontal and vertical. But this coordinate system can rotate. Now, the forces, so let's now see the forces. Now, if we look at the first force, which is the force applied by this arm, so at this moment, this arm is also in the horizontal uh, direction. So the force is going to be just applied perpendicular. So this is the force which I am going to call F. So this force is ex exerted by this arm on the particle. Now, since the particle is moving downward, then the friction force is going to be acting on the opposite direction of the motion along the tangent. And for that, this is the tangent. So this is going to be, let me just make it bold enough. This is going to be FF, which is the friction force. Now, the normal force, on the other hand, is perpendicular to the tangent. So this is the tangent and this is going to be the normal force. That's the normal force. Now, what else? We have the weight. The weight is always acting downward, and it just happened to be along the transverse direction. But this is mg. And, of course, what we have is that along this line, we will have a theta, Along this line, we will have AR, and the final thing is psi. So psi is going to be this angle. So as we said, psi is measured from the radial line all the way to the tangent, which is right here, in the sense of theta. So this is the summary of what we did. We set the frictional force opposite to the tangent right here. We set the acting force no along the normal direction because the stick, which was tangent to the ball, happened to be acting along the radial direction in the horizontal, so the force is acting perpendicular to it. Then we can calculate the uh, psi angle. Sorry, this is um, a spelling here, and I should fix this one. So this is the psi angle as tan psi, which is equal to r divided by dr over d theta. And then I can 
calculate the other angles and apply the summation of FR equals to MAR and the summation of F theta equals to MA theta. So let's have an example to put all of this together. So this example says that using a forked rod, a smooth cylinder, so this C is a smooth cylinder, having a mass of 0.5 kilogram is forced to move along the vertical slotted path. So this one is a slotted path and it is oriented such that it is vertical. So in, indeed, the gravity is acting downward. It is not horizontal. Now, this slotted path is described by this equation, r equals to 0.5 theta, where theta is measured in radians, and if the angular position of the arm is theta equals to 0.5 t square at this instant, um, where t is in seconds, we want to determine the force of the rod on the cylinder, and the normal force of the slot on the cylinder at the instant when t is equal to 2 seconds. Now, you should know that the cylinder is in contact with only one edge of the rod and slot at any instant. So, the cylinder over here is in contact, for example, with this one edge of the slot, and when the fork is pushing it, it is in contact with only one edge, not both. So let's uh, draw the free body diagram. Well, we are, I already showed here the cylinder, and I have drawn the tangent over here, which is this line. So this line is parallel to this line, as well as the radial direction. So clearly this is the radial direction. Now, what is missing over here is the transverse direction. So let me draw it. The transverse direction is going to be perpendicular, so I'm going to try my best to make it normal to the radial direction. Now, let's put the forces now. Now, what we have, the first force is the, uh, um, the weight. So, the weight is acting downward right here, which is... Um, G. Now, what other forces we have? We have the force which is applied by the fork here. So, if this is the fork and this is the line where the fork is in contact with the cylinder, this line perpendicular to it, we have the applied or the acting force. So, this acting force is basically, since it is perpendicular to the radial direction, then this is definitely going to be the, ten, uh, the transverse direction. And for that, we will know that this force F is acting in this direction. Now, we have the contact uh, force, which is the force that acts because of the contact between the cylinder and the slot. So we know that the slot is curved. So at this instant, when we have the tangent, then the, the, the contact force is going to be normal to that tangent. And for that, this normal force is going to be, or the contact force is going to be normal to the tangent. So this is NC. Now, the last thing is, is the angle psi. So angle psi is the angle extended from the radial direction all the way to the tangent measured in the same sense where the transverse direction which is right here is considered to be positive which is counterclockwise. Now if you just look before we move to the next slide because of the similarity in the angles we have this also psi and this angle is actually psi as well. Now, we have R, which was given to us as 
0.5 theta, which means that the derivative of r with respect to time, which is r dot, is going to be 0.5 theta dot and r double dot equals 2.5 theta double dot. Now, also, we have theta, which is equal to 0.5 t square, which means that theta dot is equal to t because we will multiply 2 by half and we will get 1 and we subtract 1 from the exponent uh, 2. So, uh, 1 of the, from the power, I mean 2, so 2 minus 1 is 1. And uh, finally, we will get and theta double dot is equal to 1. Now, at the instant when t is equal to 2 seconds, we will get theta, which is equal to 2 radians, and this is an equivalent of 114.6 degrees. Also, we will get theta dot, which is equal to 2 radians per second, and theta double dot, which is equal to 1 radian per second square. Just to remind you that here we substituted uh, we uh, theta da, uh, theta uh, over here. This is the equation of theta. So here two squared is four. Four by half is two. And here we have just substitute theta dot by time, which is two. So we got two radians. And theta double dot since it is constant. So two second, three second, five second doesn't matter. It is always one. Now, let's move on to the position now. So, the position can be calculated uh, as follows. So, r is equal to 1 meter. Again, this is the equation. Um, we substitute 2, um, uh, what is it? 2 radians by 0.5, which is going to be 1. And position is in meter. So, we get this one is in meter. So, um, r dot is equal to one meter per second and r double dot is equal to 0.5 meter per second squared which is again from the equations above so here we have to substitute theta dot so theta dot is two so we put two multiplied by half we get one and this is in meter per second because it's velocity the other one over here, this is 0.5 theta double dot. So theta double dot is 1. So 1 multiplied by half, we get half uh, meter per second squared. The last thing I'm going to calculate here is the angle psi. So tan psi, which is equal to r divided by dr. Sorry, let me just fix this. Uh, dr over d theta, which is equal to 0.5 theta divided by 0.5 at theta is equal to 2 radians. Why? Because theta equals to 2 radians when we have the time equals to 2 seconds, which is the required time. And what we will get, we will get psi equals to 63.43 degrees. Now, one last thing I have to add over here. This angle right there, the 24.6, which is the angle between the weight and the radial direction. How did I find this? Now, quickly, um, if you look at the instant, which is equal to two seconds, we got the angle theta is equal to 114.6. Now, if you consider that this is the 
90 degrees where mg is acting then basically all what you have to do is to subtract 90 so this angle is basically 114.6 minus 90 which is equal to 24.6 degrees now we can move on and calculate the acceleration so the radial acceleration which is equal to r double dot minus r theta dot square is going to be equal to 0.5 minus 1 multiplied by 2 square which is going to give us minus 3.5 meter per second square all of these values over here we obtained them from the previous calculation in the previous slide now a theta or the transverse acceleration is r theta double dot plus 2 r dot theta dot which is again if we substitute the value this is 1 multiplied by 1 plus 2 multiplied by 1 multiplied by 2 which is going to give you 5 meter per second squared now we can move further and calculate the sum of the radial forces as well as the sum of the transverse forces so if i do this sum so the sum of the forces acting along the radial direction is equal to m a r and this is going to be n c multiplied by sine 63.43 which is the psi angle minus 0.5 multiplied by 9.81 multiplied by cosine 24.6 and this is going to give you m which is 0.5 kilogram multiplied by the acceleration which is minus 3.5 and what is this going to give nc is equal to 3.03 newton if we do the same now we sum the forces along the transverse direction which is equal to m a theta now what we will get we will get f minus n c multiplied by cosine 63 let me fix this so cosine 63.43 plus 0.5 the weight multiplied by 9.81 multiplied by sine 24.6 which is equal to the mass 0.5 by the acceleration which is 5 this acceleration 3 point minus 3.5 is here and 5 is right there which we already calculated and what we will get we will get f which is equal to 1.8 newton Now, let me add a final hint over here. When I wrote those two equations, or these two equations, I actually did not specify the direction. But you should know that as we agreed, the radial direction is positive in the positive direction of R. And the transverse direction over here is positive in the direction of the counterclockwise. So if you look carefully, if I split the component uh, of NC into two components, which is, this is one component and this is another component. So if you look carefully, NC is acting upward, which is the direction of the radial direction as, uh, as positive. And sine C, which is uh, sine c which is the angle here is positive 
because this component is acting along the radial direction. While if you look carefully to the, the weight over here, so the weight is going to be having two components, one here and another there. So if you look uh, again to the angle, if we consider the radial component is acting downward, which is opposite to the position vector r, and this is why it is negative over here. Uh, similarly, if you look at the force, or the force over here, which is acting along this direction, so this direction is considered to be the positive direction because this is the direction where theta is increasing, and NC is acting opposite, so this is why NC is negative. So to summarize this section, we describe the equations of, uh, of motion using cylindrical coordinate. If we have a planar motion, we use a polar coordinate. And we introduce a, a hybrid system which integrate both the, both the, the RT, the radial transverse uh, coordinate, as well as the normal tangential coordinate. That's it. Thank you.